Meet Dr. Noon S. Amon Ra. He only eats one vegan meal a day. That's right, he only eats one hour a day, proving if you eat healthy, you will not lose muscle or lack energy. He even set a world record in deadlifting. But his goal is not bodybuilding or strength. It's anti-aging, longevity, and the highest quality of health and life. We're not telling people to eat only one meal a day, but we are here to show you what's possible with intermittent fasting and that we do not have to eat animal products in order to thrive. Only a handful of people on this planet have the determination to live this way. But it's amazing what happens when we do. Mankind is not supposed to have the health problems it does. And what we call aging is not normal. Let the wise words of this master teach, enlighten, and inspire you. Hi, thanks for being here today. It is my pleasure. So, you only eat once a day. That is so. I saw a video of you on the internet where you were a, a deadlifting champion. That is so. I'm presently the world deadlift champion, drug-free world deadlift champion in my particular class. I hold um, several world, national, regional records. Cyclic fasting, for instance, is known to potently promote growth hormone release. So throughout the duration of a daily fast, your growth hormone concentration tends to increase. If you combine that with resistance exercise in the evening, as you probably know, that increases testosterone production. When you sleep, that increases growth hormone production, IGF production. So we're talking about anabolic hormones that essentially promote the preservation of muscle tissue. So a regimen which entails daily cyclic fasting, evening resistance training, all of these things combine to enhance the preservation and also augmentation of muscle tissue. So you're saying somebody who's in their 30s, 40s, and 50s can actually gain muscle? If it is regimented, if it combines these factors, right. that is, increased growth hormone secretion as a consequence of protracted fasting. Now, you, you, mm -hmm. have you noticed that working out late in the day is more beneficial than working out earlier in the day? Or does it matter? It does matter, and, and that is because essentially you want to enhance autophagy throughout the day. You want to be catabolizing your proteins, you want to be catabolizing stored sugar and stored body fat. But in the evening, you actually want to suppress autophagy in order to promote that preservation of muscle tissue. So it is resistance training that stimulates your skeletal muscle that provides those metabolic factors that promote muscle retention. So yes, evening is best to do resistance exercise. This is actually good advice for even women that are older postmenopausal women that who is working out your muscles is part of what keeps you young indeed indeed you got to do weight training even if you're an old lady you got to work your otherwise your bones go weak everything starts falling apart it's, it's important what you're saying is it helps keep you young this isn't a, a vanity thing it's part of what needs to happen in your life indeed indeed and sarcopenia that is um, age-related muscle wasting muscle loss is a major uh, catalyst for premature mortality, especially in women. Right, they say that the older you get, the more you lose muscle, the more you lose your hormones, the more you, know, you start slowly, basically falling apart. What you're saying is if you keep working out, that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. Yes, yes, that is quite so. You can definitely avert many of those changes and slow down that process. So you found that you only have to sleep half as much as the average person. Yes, um, that was one of the first things that I observed. I was able to do without as much sleep as I had previously, and I was able to recuperate from exertion far more rapidly than I had been in the past. I was simply interested intellectually um, in the pursuit of anti-aging studies, anti-senescent studies. And as I began to discuss this with my then girlfriend approximately 20 years ago, she said, this is interesting. Caloric restriction, cyclic fasting, 
specific nutraceuticals, a refined diet, all of these things clearly, demonstrably, scientifically contribute to lifespan extension. And I explained how I was going to commence collecting data, writing a book, and she said, she is now my wife, by the way, Nunet Amin Ra. Why don't we do it? And it took some time to reflect on that. And I said, well, why not? And that was about a decade and a half ago. And through a few evolutions, if you will, we've been on the Amen regimen for approximately 15 years without fail. It entails a daily fast of 23 hours in duration, caloric restriction, that is, we consume approximately 1,000 to 1,500 calories a day. It entails specific nutraceuticals, that is, nutraceuticals that have been found to increase maximum lifespan in one or more organisms. It entails daily exercise. It entails meditation, ascesis. And basically, that is the Amen regimen. Qualitatively, the diet is devoid of meat and centers on specific staples, if you will. Um, basically, nuts, grains, tubers, dried fruit, we always eat in the evening. We consume our evening meal, our main meal, after our evening resistance regimen. Our exercise is typically organized in such a way that in the morning we engage in so-called persistence exercise, what you might call aerobics. In the afternoon, there's typically another aerobic session, time permitting. And in the evening is the resistance exercise session. And this can entail a number of different standard conventional uh, weightlifting exercise with integrated weighted yoga postures in between sets. And after this evening resistance session is meditation, our final meditation session because meditation is interspersed throughout the day. We meditate in two different postures, and one of those postures I can demonstrate to you briefly. This posture is called Aru Aha, that is the standing form. And this is the posture that I typically assume in my briefer periods of meditation, say 10 to 15 minutes. Aru Aha is a composite Egyptian term and it means, again, standing form. The ultimate intent of all minimalist meditation is to progressively produce a state of sustained tranquility where ideas, images, emotions are expurgated from the mind. There are essentially 10 domains of interventional studies, what I call the tetractus of anti-aging interventions. Several are fundamental. They include caloric restriction, cyclic fasting, and specific nutraceuticals, and a range of discrete genetic modifications that alter specific physiological phenomena in organisms. Almost all of them will entail either an increase in the optimization of autophagy, and that is simply a process that enables the body to renew its tissues, glycation, is an important phenomenon. Glycation is that process whereby circulating sugars bind to protein lipids in the body and render them resistant to renewal 
that accelerates aging. You also have fat accumulation or adiposity. That has been found to increase the rate of aging and limit lifespan. But more specifically, it's been found that the extirpation of adipose, the diminution of adiposity, increases maximum lifespan in mammals and other organisms. People are going to look at you and say, there's no way you can have that kind of muscle and not eat for 23 hours a day. I mean, it, it's, I know the body is more efficient, but people are going to say, well, doesn't your body start eating up the muscle after a while? Actually, limited muscle catabolism is a good thing. Limited tissue catabolism is a good thing. And it might be illuminating to conceive of it in this way. The vast majority of the solid component of your body consists of proteins. And each of those proteins that constitute our proteomes, so to speak, have a definite lifespan. And the integrity and health of your body is largely dictated by the integrity of your individual proteins. So if you are able to prevent damage to the corpus of proteins that constitute your body, or increase the rapidity with which you renew and recycle proteins, you are functionally, physiologically younger. There are a lot of people that say, because it used to be protein, 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 where are you getting your protein, you got to eat animals. Nowadays, the big thing is where do you get your sugar? It's like the body needs to have sugar to run on. Sugar is the body's fuel. If you don't put sugar in your body, carbs all day long, it's gonna, you're going to... You're going to basically waste away. What do you say to that? Well, there is a fascinating body of research which indicates that the process of glycation is integral to aging. And glycation is that process whereby simple sugars illicitly bind to the body's proteins and render them resistant to that process of renewal. And this has been found to greatly accelerate aging. That's one aspect of it. The other aspect is that when scientists have subjected animals to a low glycotoxin diet, that is a diet that is low in so-called advanced glycation in products, this independently increases lifespan. So you have a concomitant effect. If you reduce the endogenous generation of glycation products, and of course the best way to do that is simply to reduce your circulating sugar concentration to the lowest extent practicable, and you avoid or reduce your assimilation of exogenous advanced glycation in products, which are created upon cooking and are extant in various foods, whether cooked or not, you can increase lifespan through this avenue of glycation restriction. And this is one of those interventions that are included in the so-called detractors of anti-aging interventions, that is, glycation diminution. And this points to the fundamental importance of cyclic fasting as an avenue of lifespan prolongation because it is cyclic fasting that most potently suppresses the concentration of circulating sugar. The lower the concentration of circulating sugar in your body, the less sugar you have to attack your body's tissues and to render them dysfunctional, if you will. Where would you say you get your energy from if your glucose levels are kind of low? Ah, oh, that's an interesting question. Most individuals have an appreciable amount of energy stored in adipose. And this points to another element of the detractors of anti-aging interventions. And it's that if animals are rendered lean through either surgical extirpation of adipose tissue, targeted genetic interventions which decrease adiposity, that increases lifespan independently. So in a convoluted way, what I'm saying is that when you don't consume exogenous sugar, you make use of that stored adipose.
And that extirpation of adipose independently promotes longevity. Right. Obviously, you can get energy off of fat, but you don't have a lot of fat on you. So where do you get your energy from? I like your question because that points to the third avenue, which is autophagy. When you deplete your glycogen largely from your liver and your skeletal muscle, and again, the morning aerobic exercise stimulates that, and you have a low content of adipose tissue, your body makes use of stored proteins. It catabolizes all of your body's proteinaceous tissues and recycles them as substrates for energy. And that autophagic induction of energy metabolism, if you will, contributes to lifespan prolongation by renewing proteins more rapidly. Under sustained caloric restriction or cyclic fasting, skeletal muscle is preferentially preserved and there are more labile proteins uh, that are catabolized before protein and before brain tissue. So these are selectively preserved. So, okay, let's talk about your, your diet. So you're, you eat a lot of nuts and, was it roots, starches, things like that? Yes, grains. Grains. And you eat all this within an hour. Yes, or less, yes. We have our tripartite meal, if you will. And by tripartite, I mean that the first thing we consume when we break our 23 plus hour fast is what I call the Amen amino elixir, consisting of three protein sources, soy, spirulina, brewer's yeast, and ideally a dozen isolated amino acids. And the next thing we consume is the main meal one of those staples of which I mentioned earlier. These typically include beans and rice. Um, typically we have one of three beans. Cannellini beans is my favorite. Uh, the red kidney beans. And when I say bean, this is the common bean, Phaseolus vulgaris. And there are many different cultivars. Um, but one of the main reasons that we select the bean as an optimal staple, if you will, is because there are many properties associated with the common bean that accord with lifespan extension. And these include um, inhibiting uh, the enzyme alpha-glucosidase, which promotes optimal uh, glycemia, if you will. Beans are full of fiber, which really helps the sugar levels in your body. Indeed. It helps get rid of the toxins. Beans, it's great. Indeed. It's probably one of the best cooked foods you can have. Mm -hmm. If you're going to go with cooked foods, it's mm -hmm. great. Okay, go on, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, no, no, no. Yes, uh, roots, uh, tubers, um, rice, uh, grain, and nuts and seeds. Fruit and fresh vegetation is not um, high on our list of uh, staples. And that's simply because the cellulose and the water content um, take up space, if you will. So if you have a regimen where you're constricting, restricting your feeding to an hour or less, and you consume foods that occupy a large volume, have a higher water content, indigestible fiber, over time that can reduce your sense of satiation. So you want to have nutritionally dense foods in order to essentially derive the most nutrients in a minimal amount of time. Right, you want nutrient dense food. And then there is the minor meal. And the minor meal is nothing more than a dessert. Typically, nuts, dried fruit, often what you might call peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, or peanut butter and nesubat sandwiches, which roughly means royal jelly. That's one of the staples of our minor meal. And I say peanut butter and jelly uh, with some reluctance because it differs a bit from what you might find in a typical grocery store. It's simply crudely crushed peanuts and fruit preserves on bread. That's a typical dessert. 
A typical dessert may also be roasted peanuts with dark chocolate. I'm glad you said peanut butter because I love peanut butter and everybody says peanuts are bad. It's got the toxins in it. The aflatoxin. Aflatoxin, yeah. That is why um, roasted peanuts are actually preferential in our uh, ethos, if you will, um, because if you consume raw peanuts or germinated or soaked peanuts, it promotes that growth of fungal right. organisms and aflatoxins. But um, just to give an indication of the scientific basis, there is an entire tractate uh, with several sections that discuss multifarious epidemiological and interventional studies which find a relationship between longevity and nut consumption and peanuts are particularly uh, prominent in those studies. That is, it's been found that consumption of peanuts accords with lifespan. The particular variety is simply uh, crushed um, crunchy peanuts with little added salt, no it's, other ingredients. It's funny because almost all peanut butters out there, they have palm oil, sugar, and the sugar, and all that. That's why I'm sometimes reluctant to call it peanut butter because of the confusion. That is essentially the Amen meal, the tripartite Amen meal. Throughout the 23 hour fast, we typically consume teas and herbal infusions of various sorts. These include green tea, black tea, oolong tea, but also two of the South African teas, honeybush and red tea or ruibos, hibiscus, one of my favorites, rhubarb tea, and any number of herbal infusions, most of which have been found to influence one of these several physiological factors that we know are operative in the aging process and those again include autophagy optimization, glycation inhibition, fat oxidation, diminution of inflammation, etc. So when you say nutraceuticals, that sounds like something from the pharmaceutical industry. You're, you're talking about herbs and natural things. That's quite correct. There are several of these. One is niacin-bound chromium, another is glucosamine, another is curcumin or turmeric, another is resveratrol, and combined with cyclic or intermittent fasting, the polyphenols that you find in green tea, in blueberries, and in pomegranates. So when we speak of nutraceuticals, we're talking about these agents, and physiologically, all of these nutraceuticals have been found to modulate one of several molecular mechanisms. And again, we have our familiar glycation, autophagy induction, immune enhancement, and lipid oxidation or minimization. And you take these throughout the day as mixed in with your teas and water and stuff? Yes, yes. The teas that we consume, when they are sweetened, they're sweetened with non-calorific sweeteners such as stevia which is essentially the sole sweetener that I use during my fasting period. Is that your stomach? Yes, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Not at all, it's a good sign. <laughs> it's like a growling bear. <laughs> no, this is actually a good comparison here. You haven't eaten in, in a while, your stomach's growling. He hasn't eaten since yesterday and he's doing fine. Well, I haven't eaten since yesterday either. Yeah, well, that's, that's the point. Excellent. Uh, that's the point. That's and actually, that effect is partly attributable to a peptide called ghrelin, and it is released by the gastrointestinal tract in response to food deprivation. It actually increases the expression of a peptide called BDNF, brain-derived nerve growth factor which increases the proliferation of neurons in the brain, specifically in the hippocampus, an area that's associated with learning and memory. And that is probably among the reasons that fasting and caloric restriction increase mental or cognitive acuity. So this might explain people in India, they're mainly uh, vegetarians. 
and they don't eat a lot, but yet they have some of the smartest people in the world that can like literally like calculate to the 100th decimal point. And these people that, that say you need meat, you need animal products, you need fat, you need sugar, you need all that stuff to, to function properly, you got it dialed into a point where you're, you're proving you don't need any animal products. Correct. I'm somewhat conventional in that I promote the ingestion, the use of essential multi-mineral, multivitamin supplementation. And whenever someone subsists on a calorically restricted diet, either quantitatively restricted or temporally restricted, it's important to ensure that you get the minimal requisite amount of essential nutrients. Right. And that's what I get from a standard vegetal micronutrient, micro minimal mineral supplement. I take that in powdered form in the almond amino elixir and it's the first thing that we consume on an empty stomach. And that's designed essentially to be sufficient as a source of energy and nutrients without the need for any food at all. So the elixir is intended to deliver all essential nutrients in a form that is easy to assimilate. And the meals are simply for satiety and indulgence, because I think that's an important point to stress. If you're going to have a lifelong regimen that is predicated upon lifespan prolongation, it has to be sufficiently palatable in order to be sustained over a lifetime. And indulgence, gratification is an important element of enjoying life. Okay. And we do find that our diet is very palatable, very enjoyable, even with the perceived monotony. We love dinner. Feeding time is always festive. It's always a, a feast, if you will. What the research indicates is that both cyclic fasting and caloric restriction greatly increase energetic efficiency such that organisms can make do with less. All of their physiological systems become more efficient and they're able to effectuate their physiological operations with far less energy and that reduced energetic demand actually results in a lessened generation of those deleterious byproducts of metabolism, free radicals, for instance, advanced glycation in products. So with a reduction in metabolism, you get a concomitant reduction in waste products and other deleterious agents that damage the body. So the less waste products that your body has to deal with, the more cleaner it is, more efficient it is. Indeed. Being clean is almost more important than massive amounts of fuel just being guzzled down. Indeed. Another effect that has been observed widely on caloric restriction, cyclic fasting, and other interventions that increase lifespan is a decreased detoxification capacity and more specifically, an augmented expression of so-called phase two enzymes or xenobiotic enzymes. And these are enzymes that are specifically expressed in the liver, also kidney and other tissues that essentially convert toxins in such a way that enables them to be expurgated from the body more efficiently. So this is thought to be a major factor in the lengthening of lifespan associated with fasting and caloric restriction. So the, ele the organs that help eliminate toxins from the body, the liver, the kidneys, if they're cleaner, they can focus more on producing enzymes and keeping you running optimally rather than just cleaning the house and getting rid of unwanted garbage. Indeed. And also, as we discussed together, we are exposed to multifarious toxins that we can do little as individuals to avoid in our modern environment. 
So to the extent to which we can augment our detoxification capacity, we can protect ourselves from some of these toxins that would otherwise be ubiquitous, that are ubiquitous, and we simply can't avoid. Right. The, the toxins in the air, the water, even the negative people, it just drains us of our life force. Indeed. So the cleaner we are mentally, physically, and emotionally, the better we can thrive as long-living, healthy beings. Indeed. But I must um, interject an element of my philosophy, and that is I wholly accept the inevitability of aging. I wholly accept the inevitability of death. And my regimen is simply predicated upon postponing that process to the greatest extent practical. And having a high quality of life. Indeed, which is uppermost. Because most people, the last 40 years, they're just falling apart and yes. complaining about the other people. That <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. And it's important to have sufficient energy, mentally and physically, in order to arrive at the psychological, philosophical, existential state that you wish to attain before that ultimate end. Right. Do you have a website you want them? I mean, if they say, I want to know more, I want to buy his books, where do I go? You can go to our website, amintaeliteathlete.com, and it has a description of my overall regimen, um, the literature that I've produced, and how to acquire it. I don't sell my materials. I release them um, with a donation to individuals who are earnestly interested. And I stress that because our order, our regimen is ascetic and it's clearly not for everyone. So I'm interested in individuals who are serious. Right, because a lot of people can say, just give me something to take so I can get bigger muscles or live longer or not get sick, right? There is no quick answer. You have to, this has to be a lifestyle, a way of living and being. An all-encompassing, lifelong protocol. Is right, right, right. So folks, this, a lot of this, this is not for most of you who want a quick fix for something. This is a dedication to a life, a way of living. Well said. Yeah, well thank you for your time and uh, you're quite an inspiration and hopefully we'll check in again in a while and any last words of advice for people who are living in a modern world who are kind of like ready to throw their arms in the air and say, I, I, don't, I, I give up, I don't know what to do. Subjecting yourself to self-imposed discipline is the surest way to increase the quality of your existence, period. Great. Thank you. You're quite welcome. Wow, what a video, huh? I'm going to summarize the important parts for you guys who weren't paying attention because there's some really important points to be made here. First of all, we're not telling you guys to only eat one meal a day. This is an extreme diet. It's only for a few people in the world who are willing to dedicate their lives to this. But what we are trying to do is show you, A, that you will not waste away if you fast daily. That, you know, six, he, he eats one meal a day. I'm telling people to only fast for 16 hours a day and eat for eight hours. So. There's really, I mean, and you don't have to eat animal products in order to have muscles. Um, notice he also said sugar ages. Did you catch that part? Um, he does aerobics several times a day, and he does weight-bearing exercises at night. Aerobics, cardio, and weight exercises are not the same thing. Okay, you got to move your body. Notice he did a lot of standing during the day, standing versus sitting. Uh, so intermittent fasting, standing versus sitting, um, and he, when he eats his meal, the reason he has heavy things like beans and rice and peanut butter and things like that is because he needs to feel full he wants to enjoy his meal he, he said that he gets his nutrition before he has his meal from a plant-based supplement kind of like my green formula where you have all your minerals and vitamins and phytonutrients and he has some amino acids just like my protein formula and then he has his meal to feel full uh, and then he has his dessert to feel good. So he gets the pleasure out of eating. He's not denying himself anything. Uh, so it is, he's very similar to Ketel Morberg in Norway, the, guy, the wheelchair guy who healed himself 
and walked 600 kilometers across Norway eating nothing but my green formula and protein formula and having some cashews and coconut oil to feel full. Very similar to what Amon Ra is doing. He has his nutritional supplement and then he has his heavier nuts and things, uh, which you can also get some protein and substance from. So this is really inspiring. Uh, notice he also said no stress, really important because you will age and die if you have stress in your life. So do what you can, get the important bits of information from this because this is gold. This guy's taking it to the extreme and to show you what's possible. You will not waste away if you fast every day. Okay, this guy's only eating one meal a day. We're not even telling you to do that. You can eat, you, you can have a bunch of meals during the day, but fast, eat good things, stay close to nature. I hope this inspired you guys. Stay tuned for more at marcusnews.com. To learn more, study or contact Dr. Noon Amon Ra, his website is amentaeliteathlete.com. That's A M E N T A E L I T E athlete.com. This is Marcus with marcusnews.com. We hope this inspired you.